Hey guys, what's up? It's the Tominator, and it's time to finally launch this best body parts of all time series, a long requested video topic. This has already been covered by other channels in the past, but I'm going to go about things a little differently by condensing it into a top 10 countdown. I think this makes it more interesting because we can go more in depth rather than just scratching the surface. But it's also likely to prove more divisive, because anytime you rank something like this, people are bound to disagree. Plus, I had to be pretty merciless with the cuts in order to trim it down to just 10, so don't get too upset if your favorite bodybuilder didn't make it. I tried to be as objective as possible, but at the end of the day, these are just my personal picks. So anyway, I took a poll last week to determine what muscle group you guys would prefer to see covered first, and the results are in. It's shoulders, baby. Round cannonball delts are a crucial hallmark of the professional bodybuilder. One of the most important physical traits when it comes to promoting good upper body width, and likewise achieving that highly coveted V taper. It's also one of the only body parts that's visible in virtually every mandatory pose, so it's highly important to ensure proportionate development of all three heads, front, side, and rear. And before we get started, one thing to keep in mind is that I made my selections not only based on sheer size, but also by how much the delts stand out compared to the rest of the physique. Because to my mind, proportion, shape, and symmetry are equally as important as mass when we're talking about the best of the best. Two lumpy, lopsided blocks of beef just ain't gonna cut it here. This also helps to put things on more equal footing, so that even smaller individuals and old school bodybuilders can still hope to stand a chance. That being said, modern day mass monsters reign supreme here. They have a distinct advantage when it comes to attaining superior deltoid development, as it's been said that this area of the body is one of the most receptive anabolic responders, so golden era icons on much smaller doses of gear are going to find it nearly impossible to keep up. It's surely no coincidence that, unlike with, say, biceps or pecs, none of the individuals featured here date back earlier than the 1990s, including the likes of this number 10 entry, Ben Pakulski. Now, this one was a really tough call because there were about 8 to 10 other names that were pretty much interchangeable for this spot, and I'll briefly mention some of them towards the end, but for now, check out those big-ass cannonballs on Big Ben. Pakulski was obviously more well known for having a killer set of wheels, and you can bet we'll see him again later when we get to the lower body, but he also had some truly tremendous delts. Just crazy mass and roundness, and I'd argue that they actually stood out even more due to his relatively weak arms and back. One thing you'll undoubtedly notice as we continue through this series is that some of the most proportionate and harmonious physiques in history will remain conspicuously absent. Ironically, the very thing that made them such world-class bodybuilders actually prevents them from excelling on a muscle-to-muscle -muscle basis. You'll often find that when everything is in perfect balance, nothing really stands out. In contrast, glaring weaknesses in one muscle group can sometimes make an adjacent muscle group appear even stronger, and this I think is true in the case of Ben Pakulski. His lagging arms only serve to make his delts look that much larger and more impressive by comparison and that's a big reason why he makes the cut. However, despite how awesome he looked from the front, he's just barely clinging on to this final spot, because the fact of the matter is that his shoulders don't look nearly as exceptional from the back. And this is one of the main criteria I use to separate out the cream of the crop. A lot of guys tend to look amazing and select poses from the front, and a few even from the rear, but it's rare indeed to find a pair of shoulders that look superb from all angles. Roland Zierlock at number 9, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is one such rare example. You may not have heard of this guy, as he was a lesser known bodybuilder who competed back in the early to mid 90s and didn't enter that many shows. Roland may not have been a household name exactly, but just look at the phenomenal roundness and separation on display. He also had a crazy set of traps and pecs as well, but for my money, the clincher here is how great his shoulders look even from behind in the back double biceps. You can note just how massive they are next to his back and arms, and how all three heads are fully developed and neatly separated. There's a level of quality here that actually exceeds a couple of the higher ranking names on the list, 
But the reason I've relegated him towards the bottom is because his competitive career was so short and unremarkable, and I have to dock him for that. That's another thing worth mentioning, that a bodybuilder with a longer and more distinguished track record is usually going to get the nod over a lesser-known guy who only competed a handful of times. It might seem unfair or like I'm playing favorites, but we gotta reward consistency to help filter out the flukes. Also, actual contest photos hold more weight than photo shoots or gym pics because it's a lot harder to look impressive when you're depleted on stage as opposed to being super pumped after an off-season workout. So keep that in mind too going forward. But checking in at number 8 is Dennis Wolf. I know, I know, some of you are probably thinking that's a little too low, but trust me guys, number 8 of all time is far from shabby, and once you see some of the other names to come, you may begin to agree. Shoulders were easily one of Wolf's best body parts. They were a definite highlight in his crab most muscular, and also looked fantastic in the back double by. Look at how huge they are, even when standing next to Phil Heath, and this was arguably Heath's best showing at the 2013 Mr. Olympia. Dennis's round side delts help capped off that wide frame when standing relaxed or hitting the front lat spread. And if we're being totally honest though, the big bad wolf really stood out because of his excellent skeletal structure more than anything else. With the height, the narrow waist, and the wide shoulder girdle. But if we're talking strictly about the muscle, then delts would have to be considered Dennis Wolf's best upper body feature. The late Dallas McCarver lands at number 7. Despite being in only the early stages of a blossoming bodybuilding career, it's safe to say that Dallas's delts were already among the biggest in history. This kid was rocking a certified boulder at the top of either arm. But despite the insanely massive size, the reason Dallas doesn't sit any higher is because he lacked separation and didn't have the best symmetry either. You can see that plainly here in this photo, with his right shoulder being significantly bigger than the left one, so we gotta ding him for that. But still, the size and shape was there in spades. Look at him back in 2016, standing in between Michael Lockett and the soon-to-be Mr. Olympia Brandon Curry, two guys who are far from slouches in the shoulder department, and consider how badly he is murking them in that area. Or how about here versus Cedric at the 2017 Arnold Classic? Dallas's delts were truly beast mode, and it's just a shame we had to lose him so soon before he ever had a chance to reach his peak. Jay Cutler clocks in at number 6. Jay was famous for having some of the best shoulders in the game throughout the 2000s. They had excellent balance and size, and just like Dennis Wolf helped to cap off his extraordinary width like the idiomatic icing on the cake. I originally had Jay as a lock for the top three, but the more closely I examined it, the more I realized that a couple other guys were probably more deserving. Jay loses some points in my book because his shoulders never looked super full and the most muscular, and they also didn't have the cleanest separation. But that vein snaking through his front delts is a nice touch, plus he had the mass to match even Ronnie in this area. In fact, Jay is probably outdoing him here in the shoulder department back in 2001. Speaking of which, let's turn our attention now to the aforementioned Ronnie Coleman, arguably the most dominant bodybuilder ever, who I rank at number 5. Now even though I just said Jay beats him there in 2001, that was only one contest appearance, and it was far from Ronnie's best. And I haven't finalized the other lists yet, but I think it's safe to say that no one else appears as frequently as Big Ron. The guy was just a genetic freak of the highest order. He wasn't even really known for his shoulders, since he had so many other defining features, but make no mistake about it, Ronnie had some of the biggest and best deltoids out there. What really distinguishes him, in my opinion, is the incredible thickness he had from front to back. Just look at how enormous his near shoulder appears from the side, while standing next to a prime flex wheeler in Kevin Lavroni. I know this pose isn't really about showcasing the shoulders, but it is nonetheless a good metric for judging the relative size of the front and rear heads, and Ronnie excels here. They also looked ridiculously round in the most muscular, so for all these reasons, Ronnie comfortably earns his spot on the list. 
And size-wise, they actually crush just about anyone else you can think of. You maybe just didn't realize it because the rest of him was so friggin' huge. And that's the only drawback that kind of works against him. The fact that a lot of the surrounding musculature, from his pecs to his biceps to the traps, were also so massively developed that the shoulders sometimes kind of got a little lost in the shuffle. But as for ridiculous roundness, how about this next guy coming in at number four? Rolly Winkler is a big fan favorite today and somebody who I'm sure pretty much all of you are familiar with. Famous for his humongous guns, especially those outrageous triceps, it's easy to overlook the fact that he also sports some of the greatest shoulders in bodybuilding history. Just as with many of the others on this list, shoulders were a genetic strong point for Rolly. So much so that earlier in his career, when he was still training with Grandma, she actually had him stop training shoulders altogether for a while in order to let his chest catch up. There's no question that Rolly's rocking some of the biggest shoulders in the world, and they just might be the roundest set of delts I can ever recall laying eyes on. In large part, this is due to his excellent rear delts, which helps carve an imposing outline in that modified crab most muscular he does, and in the side chest pose as well. It's even evident in the rear lat spread for crying out loud. This is also no doubt a result of Rolly's extreme fullness since he rarely comes in super dry and peeled. It's easier for him to hold on to volume in this area. In my opinion though, it's that ubiquitous roundness more than sheer size alone that really sets Rolly apart. At number three, we have another unfortunately deceased bodybuilder, Nasser El Sambadi. Nasser was originally going to be a few places lower, but the more I looked, the more impressed I was, and he ultimately ended up displacing the great Jay Cutler. There's no denying that Nasser's shoulders were simply phenomenal and looked amazing from practically any angle. The 90s mass monster not only had immense thickness, separation, and roundness from the front, but also from the side and rear, and that's the mark of quality development. He was definitely packing some grade A beef in those delts, which is why it's too bad he felt the need to go mucking about with synthol in his later years, like here at the 2001 and 02 Mr. Olympias, where his shoulders suddenly appeared rather janky. It really threw off his shape and was just another sad case of blatant synthol abuse, which was fairly prevalent around that time. But I'm going to mostly put that misstep aside and consider Nasser in his heyday during the latter half of the 1990s, because back then, there's no question that he had some of the best delts going, and they were a major factor in making him such a formidable Olympia contender. Speaking of formidable, runner-up Marcus Rule had bona fide boulder shoulders, okay? In all likelihood, I think these remain the biggest set of deltoids to date. I mean, they were each at least the size of his damn head. Look at how they absolutely dwarf a young Dennis Wolf's, despite being clearly outangled. Even from the rear, they looked unbelievably gargantuan, and I included this gif just to help allay any concerns that this might be photoshopped, because as far as I'm aware, you can't really photoshop a gif, or at least it would be a lot harder to do. But anyway, no, this is legit, guys. Back in the early 2000s, Marcus was like a real-life walking Photoshop. There's only one reason Rule doesn't outright top the list, and that has to do with shape. The German giant took freaky big to the next level, but his shoulders always looked kind of jagged and blocky to me. The roundness, the symmetry, the aesthetics just weren't quite there. Okay, and before we get to number one, I just want to quickly run through a few honorable mentions. Every single one of these guys could have cracked the top 10 depending on the year and what picks you choose, but it's a top 10 after all, so not everybody can make it. First and foremost is Phil Heath. Phil's delts can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much anybody's, but the major reason I excluded him is because his arms were so dang good, they kind of overshadowed his shoulders for the most part. Plus, Phil's got a bunch of other top-tier body parts anyway, so I don't feel too bad for excluding him this time around. Gary Stridham was another serious consideration. He had some terrific shoulders, arguably the best the 80s had to offer. 
but at times when he was a little leaner, they occasionally looked a tad undersized. I just feel like the other guys on this list were a little bit bigger and a little bit better overall. And you might be wondering, where the heck is Paul DeLette? We all know Jurassic Paul had no shortage of size and was highly symmetrical for a mass monster. But my problem with DeLette is that his posterior delts were actually overdeveloped. I suspect he may have had trouble mentally connecting to his back and ended up pulling a lot with his shoulders, but whatever the case may be, it's not exactly a great look. Josh Lenardowitz and Steve Kuklo are two current pros with top-notch shoulders. My reservation for both of them is that they don't look quite as incredible from the side or rear as they do from the front, and they don't necessarily have the definition to go along with all that mass. Dexter Jackson is another guy you may be thinking of. He's always possessed fantastic fullness and separation, but size-wise, he comes up short compared to most of the names on this list. Ronnie Rockle was another German with elite shoulder development, but I just don't see anyone on here that he definitively deserves to knock off. Dennis James had some beastly delts, especially the anterior portion, and could have made it, but again, I feel like his pecs and triceps were so good, they kind of outshined his shoulders at times, so he narrowly missed the cut. And lastly, there's another Dennis, Dennis Newman. This is yet another somewhat obscure bodybuilder from the 90s, but he had a glorious set of delts. They were very Lavroni-esque in that hands class most muscular. He could easily be on here, but like I mentioned earlier, the edge goes to top Olympian-level bodybuilders versus guys who never proved themselves on the big stage. And this leads us nicely into my number one pick, which is, of course, Kevin Lavroni. At this point, it should come as no surprise to any of you, as Lavroni seems to be the consensus choice in the bodybuilding community for the best shoulders ever. It should be said, though, if we're being completely candid, that Kevin never had the biggest shoulders. Almost everyone on this list, and certainly the rest of the top seven, had more raw mass to work with. You can see that right here in this rather revealing comparison with Ronnie Coleman. But still, what makes Lavroni a cut above the rest, in my opinion, is the unparalleled quality he brought to the stage time and time again. It's a matter of quality over quantity, guys. Because Lavroni's delts were proportionately bigger than just about anybody's. And his shape and separation was godlike. Look at that deep split between the front delt and the pecs. Look at the striations. You just don't see that kind of detail anymore. Even in his youth, you could tell that Lavroni was highly gifted in this area. I'm not sure what his age was in this photo, so if you happen to know, post it for us in the comments section below. But regardless, he's almost certainly still a teenager here, and those shoulders are already super buff and defined. Plus, we can't forget his go-to signature shot, the hands class most muscular, which would utterly fail if he didn't have those sensational shoulders framing the pose. Lavroni truly had it all. The shape, the symmetry, the roundness, the separation, the proportions, and the size. Which is why I consider his shoulders to be the greatest of all time. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and if so, please drop a like and subscribe. Remember, this is just the first of many in this new series, so next time we'll probably take a look at who's got the best chest. I suspect that one will be a doozy because there's been so many outstanding sets of pecs over the decades, dating all the way back to the golden era, so it's going to be a damn challenging task to narrow it down to a top 10. We'll see if I succeed or if maybe we'll have to extend it. But until then, this has been the Tominator, signing off, and I'll be back!